So in this Rust Edit tutorial, we're going to be talking about prefabs. Um, one of the main things you're going to be doing is dragging in prefabs, manipulating them somehow, rotating them, scaling them, moving them around, and creating your own custom prefabs, and just making your island look a lot more custom, interesting, or maybe you're only making custom prefabs, you're not interested in making full maps, and uh, you just want to make your own stuff out of things that are already in the game. So we're going to click on prefab list. And first of all, one of the most important ones is if you go to assets, then bundled prefab and auto spawn, uh, you get the monuments in here in all the caves and this all works as you expect. So if you drag anything in from here, it will work with all the loot, etc. Respawning properly. If you drag in the oil rig, it will have the scientists on there, etc, etc. Certain prefabs have certain details like height maps and textures attached to them. So what I mean if, if I for example take one of the harbors and just drag it onto the beach, it will, uh, as you can see, kind of snap to whatever height my mouse is. So I'm going to go here and just to be sure I'm going to click on snap to terrain and it's going to snap to the proper height. I can then by dragging it over using any of these arrows I can just drag it along on that axis, so on X, Y, or Z. And if I want to move it freely, I drag or I click on the white one and I can move in all axes, which is nice moving it freely, but a lot of times you just want to move it on one axis. If you want to rotate, you can click here, click on rotate. Once again, click on one of the arrows to move it around uh, or to rotate it on a certain axis and click in somewhere in the middle if you want to move it freely. Let me just undo that by pressing Ctrl C or going to edit and then undo. And then lastly, you can also scale. Same thing. You can do it on one axis by dragging any one of these or do it universally by taking the one in the middle. Um, I would not recommend scaling full um, red towns because things are meant to work. And if you start scaling, uh, some things like ladders or other things might not work properly anymore. And it, it might break the thing. So with actual monuments, I would not recommend scaling them. So let's rotate this in a way that makes sense. Move it into the water a little bit. And then we have these prefab modifiers. So first of all, let's apply the height. You can see that it drags everything right into the proper height basically make sure that it all fits into the terrain as intended then we can apply the splat which is the textures and it will paint some textures around it making it even look more into the, or part of the terrain we can apply the topology which will basically do all the underlying layers so that things work as intended i don't think the harbor has any holes to go underground just apply the alpha mask just to be sure and this way we very easily added our own harbor to our map so it's super easy if they have the height map modifier or the prefab modifiers applied to them not all prefabs have this so this doesn't have any modifiers so yes you can still of course manipulate it in any way you want or scale it and with these props it's uh okay to scale them doesn't really matter uh some things if you scale them really crazy don't spawn in properly or really mess with your performance so don't go too crazy with scaling stuff and also make sure you don't invert things um, because then you get all kinds of errors and stuff so yeah you can go crazy move things around move them into the island oh once again if you are having trouble finding something or flying around you can just press f to focus on whatever you have selected if you have a prefab selected and you can see here if I rotate it the Z number is going up and down so you can manually type in numbers to have it perfectly locked to a axis so let's keep that in mind same with the size if I move this over you can see that the axis the X axis is moving you can make this round numbers to make it easier to uh, copy and paste things or align things just have round numbers is a lot of times better 
as you can see when scaling this i can see the numbers moving and i can also just type in any number i want you can also use these to rotate on an axis you can choose different axes and do a quick 90 degrees rotate which is also super handy this also allows allows you to fix your errors so this thing is very wonky if i just change everything to zero oh not the position whoops the rotation change everything to zero it should be exactly as it's supposed to be if i press ctrl d and press ctrl w to get my move tool i can move this over and now i have two of them then hold ctrl and select both of them if i now press ctrl e again to get my rotate tool with the space set to global if i now start rotating you can see that they kind of rotate alongside of each other if i change this to local you can see that they rotate on their own axes so depending on what you're going for uh, keep in mind you can change those things sometimes when you are moving a item um, and it's like rotated around and let's say i take the move tool and i actually want to move it along uh this way it's basically like it's flying away with a rocket under it um it's gonna be very annoying to like constantly move this if i then set this to local these axes make a lot more sense and i can just move it along the axes that i want so if you're having trouble moving stuff around like i showed you with this one and you have to constantly move two axes to basically get it where you want it uh, because when you get the middle one you're moving it all over the place and that's that doesn't work um try messing changing it from global to local or from local to global and you might get the wanted effect if you want to have precise rotations or uh, movement you can make it snap and this way you cannot uh if you set it to for example 38 or whatever degrees it will only snap at those degrees so it if you for some reason need a very specific five degree rotation every uh, duplicate or whatever this is how you can do that and the same with the movement you have to set it to global first get out the move tool you can see if i set movement snap on and give it a value it will only snap in those increments um i don't use that a lot but it's it's nice to know that that it's there then lastly you got the center gizmo and this will always give you those uh, colored options this is called the gizmo um, in the middle of the screen so you don't have to be looking at the object as you can see when you look around the axes also rotate so it can be a little bit uh, weird sometimes and sometimes when you move left it actually goes right and when you move up it goes down depending on where you're looking at so this center gizmo can be a lifesaver in some uh, situations when it's really hard. For example, when you're moving very big prefabs and you're rotating it around and you have to look at a certain area for it to line up. Um, this can be a lifesaver. This can also be very annoying and sometimes you just want to turn it off. Usually I have it off unless I need it. That is the overview for the prefab list and what to look for in prefabs and how to manip manipulate them the basic way. In the next video, we're going to be talking about roads and rivers. We're going to create our own roads and rivers in this proc gen. Um, so I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching this beginners to advanced Rust edit course. There will be a link in the description to the playlist that has all the videos that are currently in the playlist available. And if I helped you out in any way, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm out. Peace. Damn.